your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, women's hockey fans, Erica L. Ayala here, your host of Locked on Kraken and your guide to women's hockey. It's time for another women's hockey spotlight, and this one is going to be jam packed. Let's start with the biggest news and maybe a little bit of controversy regarding PWHL trades and releases. Now, we did get our first trade, and that was a trade between PWHL Boston and PWHL Minnesota. Now I spoke to PWHL Minnesota he, uh, general manager, excuse me, uh, Natalie Darwitz. And in having a conversation with Natalie, she knew uh, early on that Sophie Jakes was at least one of the players she wanted to consider. She wanted to shore up the defensive side for Minnesota, and also be able to get a defender that can move the puck, help in transition, exiting the zone, and of course, hop up in the offense. In my conversation with Darwitz, she also said that Sophie's familiarity with the Minnesota area certainly helped. For those who don't know the WCHA, which includes Minnesota, Minnesota State, Bemidji State, Wisconsin, and so, yes, she's very familiar with the state of hockey. In return, Boston got Susanna Toppany and Abby Cook, both forwards. And so not a like for like there. But overall, it just seemed like this was something, at least from the Minnesota side, that they hope will help Boone their blue line. Now, since the trade, Minnesota is 2-1 and one and Boston is 0-3. Jakes did get her first point in a Minnesota win over Ottawa uh, in her first appearance for Minnesota. I also did hear from Natalie Darwitz that this is part of an ongoing process to not only get the Minnesota team right for this season, but for seasons beyond. She gave a few nuggets, including that each team has to have five players on a multi-year contract. Sophie Jakes, although she um, was not one of the original players or kind of the cord players or franchise players, air quotes for those listening on audio, that was signed to Boston, she was on a multi-year deal. And so this gives Minnesota a little bit of you know, security when it comes to the defensive position. Now, as far as whether they'll do more trades or even looking at what a draft might be like, it sounds like that concept, or I should say the um, the logistics of an entry draft are still a little bit up in the air. For- now, a bit of controversy regarding Michaela Grant Mentis, who was released from Ottawa Michaela Grant Mentis had been scratched the last handful of games before being officially released by the team on February 17th. And Michaela Grant Mentis had three points in games for an Ottawa team that has really struggled offensively and to get wins in the PWHL. Now, no one has commented yet on exactly why Michaela Grant Mentis was released. There have has been wide speculation on social media. We're not going to get into that. But what I can say is Michaela Grant Mentis has been a dynamic player in the PHF. She has been a player that has been invited to compete with Hockey Canada. And in case you are in a camp, which I completely disagree with, where you want to invalidate the PHF or the NWHL, the league that preceded the PWHL, let me just put you on. Michaela Grant Mentis was also one of the top scorers throughout the country at a small school in Mercyhurst. So this is not new, as the, the young folks say. Michaela Grantis is, Grant Mentis is true. So I want to squash, I definitely want to squash any of the speculation. Now, whether this was a good fit or not, when it comes to personnel, personality, that can be argued for sure. The, the point is that we just don't have any information to my knowledge, Michaela Grant Mentis at the time I'm recording has not made any comments, nor has um, um, PWHL Ottawa really gotten into it. So 
you know, it's unfortunate that Michaela Grammentis, someone who can be a really dynamic scorer, is not in the league, at least not right now. Now, I did confirm with a source from the PWHL that because she was released, she is eligible to be picked up by another team. That being said, we're getting close to the time where the trade deadline is coming to a close. So whether or not that will happen for MGM, a.k.a. Bucky, as she's known, is yet to be determined. I do want to get into a little bit more controversy regarding just the PWHL and the rule changes, uh, things maybe not completely clear with regard to things like uh, goalie interference. Well, hey, welcome to hockey and a few other things. There was also some mild controversy regarding Black History Month and perhaps the PWHL New York not taking an opportunity to reflect and to recognize once again the preceding league in the PHF. I'm going to get into that, but I did spend time in Long Island at UBS Arena, who will host the 2026 NHL All-Star Weekend. And that's because the PWHL New York squad hosted Montreal. That game went into an overtime shootout where Abby Levy, hometown hero, denied, yes, denied, Marie-Philippe Poulain, not once, but twice in overtime alone, in the shootout, I should say, alone. Abby Levy, you're going to hear from her in a little bit regarding, again, just some of the, the callbacks uh, that happened in that game. But first, I want to give you a little sneak peek of something that I have on my platform, Black Rosie Media, and that is a behind the scenes tour of the PWHL New York facilities, specifically the home locker room. A lot of what we've heard from the PWHL is that they want to increase professionalism. And a good start is that PWHL New York, at least for some of their home games, is playing at an NHL arena, a new NHL arena like UBS. So let me take you to, I'm going to talk you through a, a little bit of a snippet of my behind the scenes at PWHL New York. Now, if you want to watch the full video, you can go over to blackrosymedia.com and become a member of our Patreon posse. But you can see here, they've got the stalls. These are the stalls that are the NHL locker rooms. And I was able to walk through there, also see the video room. You can see me here in the video room. This is used by the coaches. And just like we see in the NHL, coaches do have the option uh, to get the the video feed and then be able to utilize real time video to help make adjustments as the game is going on. I think that's super, super cool. And there is training facilities right there. You can see the sticks. That is the motto of PWHL New York. They have a compass, New York excellence, success, and we. I actually asked uh, Howie Draper what. That com what went into that compass, and he didn't really know, so I'm going to have to follow up. Apparently, that comes from the general manager, Pascal Daou, but you can see the teams warming up. This was actually from earlier in the season. There goes Kareem Schroeder, who's been having a fantastic PWHL season. And then here is the black rosy jersey. That's from the PHF, the Metropolitan Riveters. And they were inspired by my logo and then used that to celebrate Black History Month last year. You can see Marie-Philippe Poulain warming up. So again, head over to Black Rosie Media if you want to watch that full video. But speaking of Black Rosie Media uh, and, and the video you just saw of Madison Packer, which I'll play for you again in a moment, but the PWHL New York team was the first team to celebrate or was set to be the first team to celebrate Black History Month. Now, the PWHL didn't do a great job publicizing this. Some other teams now uh, have done a little bit of a better job, but on February 21st, PWHL New York was to host a Black History Month. My understanding is that there are supposed to be specialty designed shirts that all of the players would wear for walk-ups, but for whatever reason, that just didn't manifest. I don't, um, I'm not able to share all of the details at this moment, but what we do know and what I heard 
for Madison Packer prior to Wednesday's game, which again was against Montreal, is that she was going to throw it back to this jersey. Now, this is the Black Rosy jersey that the Metropolitan Riveters wore to celebrate Black History Month. It was designed by the amazing Jordan Dabney. And as you can see, it re resembles my Black Rosy media logo because Jordan actually also designed my logo several years before these jerseys were introduced. Whereas my or my logo has a microphone to empower Black women in media. This one really was a callback to World War II when women, yes, including Black women, served as what we know as riveters, or they would help to, um, they would help in the factories for World War II. There's so much history to unpack in this jersey, and Jordan Dabney did a great job. And so to honor Black History Month, Madison Packer had already committed to wearing that Black Rosie jersey. Now, Black Rosie was, again, a Metropolitan Riveters themed jersey, a part of the professional or the premier hockey federation, excuse me, the PHF. And Madison Packer, of course, played all eight seasons with the Metropolitan Riveters um, in that league. For whatever reason, it's not made clear to me. Um, or I cannot divulge what the thought process was behind the PWHL, but it was noticeable that although the PWHL New York team did show walk-ups for the players, that Madison Packer was absent from any of those videos or photos. And she was the only player, and again, it seems like some of this at least was because of a technicality, but she was the only player to represent Black history on the PWHL's Black History Month. Now I do want, or Black History Month game, I do want to let everyone know in full disclosure, I moderated a panel that included former Riveter, actually, and current PWHL analyst, Soroya Tinker, as well as she's the head of the Black Girl Hockey Club Canada program, as well as Fatou Ba, who is a board member of Black, uh, Black Girl Hockey Club in the US. And so we had a great conversation. If you know of the local W, check them out because they actually posted the entire panel and we had a really great conversation. But it just was a little bit odd that not only that the PWHL apparently had some issues getting their own Black History Month uh, paraf uh, uh, paraphernalia and shirts, but that they didn't do a great job publicizing, publicizing it and that the only player that was prepared to celebrate black hockey history, Madison Packer, was omitted from social media. And some people are saying, oh, well, you're not going to want to promote another league. Well, the PWHL promotes, they've promoted and shown WNBA jerseys, NWSL crossover, and of course, NHL jerseys. The PHF is defunct. It was acquired by the PWHL. And at least for my money, it doesn't make sense to me why you can't just show someone in a jersey. Um, this is Madison Packer representing Black hockey history and women's history, Black women's history in the United States. So seems like a big miss to me. But I want to close out the show, as I mentioned, or at least this segment, talking about Abby Levy, who had a great performance for PWHL New York. She was able to get the win. I, I said, shut down Montreal uh, and shut down Marie-Philippe Poulain twice in overtime. But again, a little bit of controversy. There were two goals uh, that were a little bit controversial. One that um, the, the PWHL New York team and Levy in particular thought was the right call and one that they thought was the wrong call. This did end up being something that uh, twice impacted Montreal. Obviously, the goals were being scored against Levy. And uh, here's what Levy had to say about the situation. Oh, the one that counted. What did, what did you see or feel on that point? Oh, I thought that was a bogus call. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> I saw that happened in the Boston game the other week, so or the last game, and I kind of knew going into it that it was going to be a goal. But um, I thought I got it back because I thought the second goal that went in that they called back, I thought that was a good goal. So I really can't be mad. I think the luck, it all 
turns the right way it was supposed to turn out, so I can't really be mad about it. What did you see on the no-goal? What, what was your vision? I, I didn't see the puck, that's for sure. <laughs> that went in the back of the net. But I, I don't think I'm used to the rules of uh, just a player being in the crease, even though I don't touch him. That's still like a callback. So I think that was pretty cool to see. And I was definitely shell-shocked when that was called back. I, I didn't even complain, and that's not typical when I, when I think a no goal is supposed to be called. So that was pretty interesting. I got to read the rule book now. So again, you can see that PWHL players, they're having to get accustomed to new rules. And that's not just regarding contact in what a lot of people assume is skater to skater in open ice, but also even contact or proximity to goaltenders. And so you heard Levy say one she thought was a bogus call, but she, again, there's been a little bit of inconsistency and Montreal has been bitten by that a few times now, but uh, also that she was kind of felt that it canceled each other out because she's not used to and accustomed to the contact or the crease rule in the PWHL. And she was content to let that goal be an, a goal and stand. So still some learning curve in the PWHL, but right now the standings are as follows. PWHL Minnesota at the top of the table with 21 points. They leapfrog PWHL Montreal, and that's mostly just because of the overall record. PWHL Minnesota has five wins to Montreal's four outright wins, but PWHL Montreal also has 20 point, 21 points in the standings. PWHL Toronto has made a surge, and they are now with 17 points in third place overall. PWHL New York with 15 points, PWHL Ottawa with uh, 13 points, and PWHL Boston right now in sixth place with 12 points. I have a source that's telling me that we are going to get the playoff format being announced soon, maybe as early as in the next week or so. And there's going to be another new wrinkle, it sounds like, to how the seeding goes for the playoffs. At least from what I've heard, it is definitely going to be interesting. But Again, I'm going to wait for the announcement and we'll talk about it here on the Women's Hockey Spotlight as part of Locked on NHL.